Joining me right now is the Bonson Group founder, managing partner, and chief investment officer. He's the author of DividendCafe.com, David Bonson, back with us. David, great to see you. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, what is your expectation for this data, and how does the second half of the year look like to you in terms of the economy? Well, I don't think there'll be a lot of surprises this week. I think the thing about that PCE number on Friday is it's sort of asymmetrical risk reward. If the uh, inflation reading that the Fed likes to look at with PCE comes in higher than expected by a tenth of a point, it sort of reinforces that they're going to hike at the late July meeting, which is already the market expectation. But if it comes in substantially lower than expected as the CPI has been doing lately, it could give the market an indication that the Fed will continue in their pause. Oh, well, it's all about what the Fed does in July, I guess, at this point. Mike Lee, jump in. Yeah, yeah David, um, my, uh, my concern is that uh, we've seen some massive price-to-earnings multiples expansion across the market this year, up by roughly a third, so from an 18 to a 24 in the S&P 500. This in the face of declining earnings, slowing economy, and tightening liquidity. So my thoughts for you is, can this continue? And if it can, how? Well, it probably cannot, but even if it does, why would anyone want to invest into that? It's the great flaw of index investing. People are voting on multiple expansion, and they're voting on that after multiples are already very high. And so I think that a far more sensible way to be investing is in value plays. And fortunately, for the last few months, several of those have been out of favor. And so the energy has not seen big multiple expansion. Even certain industrial names, consumer staple names have not. So I'm talking my book because we're dividend growth investors, but I can't reiterate enough. Believing that NVIDIA will go from 200 times forward earnings to 250 <laughs> times strikes me as a very silly investment policy. That's very funny. I mean, these stocks are completely outsized gains year to date. Look at a stock like Microsoft up better than 100 yeah. percent year to date. Do you see value in the banks right now, David? I mean, look, we've got the big banks expected to fare well in the Federal Reserve's annual stress testing. We're going to get the stress test results this week. Uh, and well, we've had a fair amount of turmoil in the banking industry. And you know that we're looking at a real tight credit situation situation right now. Credit is tight. PacWest is selling $3.5 billion in loans to credit firm Ares Management in an effort to improve its liquidity. Regional banks this morning are mixed. But what's your take on this uh, stress testing result that we'll get from the Fed this week? Well, you know, Maria, you sort of point out two things there, because I like that story about the private credit opportunity. We're investors in Blackstone, Apollo. We recently added Blue Owl. These are companies that are buying money good assets from the balance sheets of some of these banks. Private credit has been a huge story since the financial crisis. It did not start with Silicon Valley Bank. But the next inning of that story, we really believe it's a great way to get exposed to high yields with money good assets. On the banks, honestly, we only like a couple of them because we think even if the overall story was overdone, they don't have great earnings power going forward. J.P. Morgan has always been the exception because they were the winner out of the financial crisis. They got to take mm. over Bear Stearns, Washington Mutual. Uh, you look right now, now recently First Republic. You look at a bank like Truist, the ticker TFC, I don't think it's a regional bank, a small bank. They're not caught up in the same problems as First Republic. It's a huge bank, and yet it sort of sold off with some of the others. So we do like that sort of super regional story with Truist as well. Where are the best dividend plays? You're a dividend investor. Who's got the highest dividends and who's got the best well dividend growth story? Yeah, that second part is what we care about. You want a good high dividend when you buy, but you want a good dividend growth going forward. And so we love Simon Property, which owns a lot of high-end malls. They continue to have very high occupancy, good rent growth, and a 7% dividend yield. And they, we think there's ongoing growth of their net operating income. The other one is the energy pipelines, these various uh, MLPs uh, that are transporting oil and gas. We use a ticker UM. I, which is kind of okay. a basket of some of these different MLPs. But boy, th those yields are really strong and they're growing higher still.
Yeah, that is great advice there. We so appreciate your time this morning. David, thanks very much. Thanks, Maria.